Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. And on this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, I promised you this earlier this year when I did the video on how to take plants outdoors, indoor plants outside, and now I gotta show you how to bring those indoor plants back indoors because this is a very vital step to the actual putting out and in of a plant. It's a must do and you have to do it properly. Otherwise your life is going to be a bit of a nightmare a month to two months into the winter. So expect October or December to be the not so nice time. So when I determine the time to bring them indoors is when the temperatures outside at night are getting below the 10 degrees Celsius. That's when your gains kind of equalize the losses that you would get when you're transitioning plants outside. And mid-August in where I am in zone three, uh, Saskatchewan, it is getting to the point where we are getting lower temperatures at night. And so my benefits outweigh the negatives. And it's just because when temperatures dip below 10 degrees Celsius, we tend to get less growth and it kind of can send some of your plants into a dormancy phase. So I did a video on how to select what plant to put outdoors and how to select which ones and not to put outdoors. But for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna show you the effects of putting plants outdoors and some things you may expect. And then two different types of plants and how to manage each one differently, depending on what your plant looks like and just physically, like morphically, what it looks like and how to clean it up so that you don't end up with too, too many issues. So you only need, first off, a hose with the stream setting, and that can be done outdoors. We'll explain what to do there. You are going to need your nematodes, your beneficial biological control nematodes. Now, these ones are universal. These do fungus gnats, thrips, um, mealy bugs, anything born in the soil. These guys will take care of, and I'll show you how to apply these. I have a whole video on these guys, and I will leave a link for these down below. I'm in love. If you guys did not know, I believe in healthy potting soil and not sterile potting soil because it will work miracles for you when it comes to pest control and just getting better growth on your plants. And then you do need a bowl of water. And inside of this bowl, all I have is a Dawn dish soap. So I use the Platinum Dawn and I only put like two, three drops in there and I put some warm water and then a paper towel. So let's look at our first guest coming back inside and that is a snake plant. These guys are really awesome to take outside. The growth you see on them is exponential. I mean, you can't, honestly, you, you will not see snake plant growth until you put them outdoors in full sun. They go absolutely wild. However, if you don't harden them off fully, you can expect to see things such as browning or blotching on your plant. But natural pest-wise, fungal, bacterial, there's not a lot that can take these guys out. So the first thing you're going to do with any plant, it doesn't matter what plant you put outside, you're going to want to blast them. So you have your cover pot and then I have a nursery pot for all my house plants. You're gonna to wanna to separate the two. You're going to want to blast the plant. And all this is doing is it's getting rid of the big bugs. So the big ones that can you can physically see and then maybe some larger eggs that may have been placed on your plant, cobwebs, dead leaves, that sort of thing. After that, you're just gonna take your paper towel and quite literally soak it in the soap water. And you don't have to, you can just reuse this over and over again. And then all you're going to do is start at the base and work your way up. Now, yes, this is going to remove some pest, but the main premise behind doing this is actually removing dust in hopes of getting better photosynthesis once it's indoors in a shadier environment. So literally just go through the entire plant. I use paper towel because I'm deeply satisfied by the color I end up with. It's gross how much ends up on this. And then the other thing that you're gonna wanna do is actually wipe off the outside of the pot itself. You don't wanna bring dust dirt and dust into the home, but you can use Windex or whatever the case this is, whatever the case is to make this look good and pretty and complete. So 
we're gonna set that guy aside we're gonna let his soapiness dry off i don't rinse this off after it's very very diluted um and so that's not necessary but i do i do clean the whole thing and depending on your snake plant and what stage depending on your snake plant and what stage of growth you're in you may want to actually get a q-tip dip it in the soap water mixture and actually clean in the nooks and crannies just to really make sure you're cleaning out any bugs so our next one is a desert rose that i put outdoors again another plant that does leaps and bounds better when it is outside so i also blasted this guy down fully completely cleaned him and now he's back indoors so when I blast them, I blast the stem and I blast in these areas here and at the leaf area as well. That again, gets rid of all the big guys. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to wipe the stem and then you're gonna wanna also wipe the leaves. However, these areas where the leaves touch the stem or where there's a large cluster, I, it looks like I'm gonna probably get a flower this year, which is nice, but wherever you're ending up with like a clustering of leaves, you really want to get in there with your water and your soap because that is where your bugs are gonna hang out. And so if you need to, take a Q-tip, and if you really can't get them off, then a spray bottle. Just spray them down and just blast them. Blast them with water blast them with soapy water, hydrogen peroxide, whatever it takes, whatever it takes to make you satisfied that he is fully cleaned off. That is literally all you're going to do. And then he is done as well. Now, this is where these guys come in. I believe in a biologically active soil, both from a soil nutrient cycling side, and then also from a pest control side. If you guys did not know, there is ways to control things such as bacterial, fungal, and bugs, pesty bugs. And so one question I got on my last video was my little ball things were yellow or orange in the last video. And now this product has turned to white. Quite honestly, it does not matter. These guys are white. It, the package is the same. These do not have to be kept in the fridge. They can just be kept on the counter. They just have to be kept at room temperature. And all I do is I literally take approximately that many of them and then I just sprinkle them on the surface and then I will water them in or I will push them in. And all you gotta do is keep them moist for the first three days and then your nematodes will hatch and they will actually eat any eggs or larvae that is in your soil that has decided to make its home in your house plants over winter. So once the eggs are gone, the whole life cycle is ended for the, for the bug. So you don't have to worry about adult bugs because there won't be any because they're all in here and any adults that did exist that could lay more eggs have been cleaned off and removed. So this is very easy to do. Now, one issue that people will say is, well, how do I keep my plant moist? For three days that means i have to water it for three days and that can cause overwatering issues and you're not wrong which is why i would advocate for placing them on and then watering them in in hopes of gravity taking them farther into the soil profile or mixing them in with your finger a fork or applying a layer of sphagnum moss to the surface that you will then remove after three days or misting any of those three options will work don't overthink it it's pretty pretty simple so well uh houseplants indoors these are done and they will do just fine and i got awesome results because they were outdoors in the full sun all summer long if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments down below if you are a houseplant person a garden person or a combination of the two because it helps me make videos just a little bit suited, better suited towards my audience. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, of course, if you want more science-based factual information about houseplant care or gardening care. I'm slowly starting to transition back into soil amendments and houseplants and that sort of thing because unfortunately, the summer is winding down. So that's just life in Canada. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.